It is June the 18th, 2022. I'm Chris, and this is the future of photography. The future of photography. Hello. Hello, Adrian. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> doing good. We we lost Jeremiah somewhere on the way. No, he's he's out shooting and uh, in the wilderness somewhere so is he i well he's yeah apparently the, he, he just sent two photos in an email and it looks very very uh national park and uh oh uh, yeah i saw that park. one of those i've seen one i didn't see the other one but yeah that did look lovely so i hope he's having a good time so he left us to record an episode for you which we are happy to do and of course we are uh in and out of the current developments, including, of course, the magic machines that you give a sentence to and it returns a picture to you. Um, mm -hmm. We had an episode in the past, not too long ago, about DALI 2, OpenAI's uh, image generation system. There are others. And uh, in this episode, we'd just like to give a bit of an overview and maybe do a bit of speculation on uh, what these things mean for us. Um, we're also going to show you how to get on these systems where where it's possible so you can uh get your own feet wet and play with uh making we should we art. should probably put a health warning on that though it is a bit <laughs> of a rabbit hole isn't it, it did, you know, so so you know just if anybody doesn't want to lose many hours of time just be very careful how and where you listen to this episode right maybe you want to listen to it somewhere where you've got slightly less of an internet connection like in the car or something <laughs> Yeah, and we, and we have to make sure to to date this episode. This is June the 18th, 2022, because the development is so quick. There are new systems coming out. We are, it seems we are at a, in, in somewhere either in the beginning of or very, very well into some uh, Cambrian explosion type event here. Um, <clears throat> that's at least what it feels like for me. And the one thing that made this very obvious is DALI 2, which we talked about. DALI 2 is uh, OpenAI's um, system that turns out to be, well, as far as we know, turns out to be quite good. Um, it's not open yet. It's not available to the public, so you can't just go there and play with it. Um, it's in a closed test. We're looking at some last number I've seen is about a 1,000 plus users that use it. Um, there's a wait list. So if you go to their website, we're, we're going to put links in the in the description here. Um, if you join their waitlist, um, there is a slim chance that you'll get on board. They do this in waves. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't bet my house on it though. It's very very uh, crowded, very crowded list right now. So a lot of um, people very interested in this stuff, isn't there? So oh yeah, yeah this be... has been viral now. Everyone has seen Dali too, and uh, the prospect of being able to play with a beta of the system is like everyone wants in. And I'm on that waiting list. I've been there for a while. I'm not sure <laughs> I'll get an invitation. <laughs> if I get one, we'll have a couple of episodes about this for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Dali two, I don't think we have to explain a lot about this i've um for those of you watching the video if, if you if you're listening on audio we are going to have a lot of imagery in this episode so um here are just a couple of examples that i uh found online there's a subreddit uh called dali2 d-a-l-l-e-2 um which has images made by people here's one imperial gothic it's like the What's the original title of that image? American Gothic. American Gothic, yes, the, the yeah, famous but this, painting. But this is the one with a uh, stormtrooper and Darth Vader, as opposed to <laughs> the farming couple. Um, uh, yeah, Imperial Gothic. Why not? Um, or here's one with a, a photo of two capybaras in Hawaii. They're each wearing sunglasses and are next to a luxury car. Comma <laughs> digital art. Some of this stuff is so specific, isn't it? It's of like it, it is. it, which is which is great. But where do people get these ideas from? See that that is one of the difficulties that I have with these systems. Because the next one we'll talk about, Mid Journey, I have I have had a good play with, and uh, the the whole photographer's skill set needs to change for these. Because when I take pictures, I'm out there, I see things visually, I get inspired by the environment, and I go, okay, let's take the portrait here, and this is a good background, and the light is nice here. Uh, the moment you have to explain 
from scratch in front of a white in front of a white entry entry box on your screen that whole i was honestly i was sitting there going hmm and what now that's really interesting i do not have isn't it? those pathways developed yet because it's it's a compositional skill isn't it because you know, i mean i typically uh, i know a lot of people say this but typically for me <laughs> The composition is a reductive process. So you have yeah. this whole world of stuff that you can talk about. Uh, yes. or, or, sorry, not to talk about, so to talk about, but yes, but also to, to photograph, to compose, and, and, and actually what you're trying to do is is create a composition that isolates the, the, some of that stuff so that there's only the things in the composition that you want, which is a reductive process. Whereas this little white box that you've just described, you've got to start from scratch and you've got to imagine the whole thing. And that's, and, and that's you have, the other way and around. you can't put anything in there, anything you like, which means you have no limitation unless you give yourself a limitation. The moment you are in a space with a camera, you have limitations because that space is your limitation. The light is your limitation. The subjects you have around are your limitation. You have to work with what you have there. Of course, you can bring all sorts of stuff but that means some planning and now you're sitting in front of that white white piece of paper and you have to write a novel and that is um that it's, is difficult and, and it takes playing because these systems all react differently so the next one that i played with was mid journey which i got uh, beta access to and uh you get a like a handful of credits that you can use or tokens or whatever they call them and um i played with it i did not have good results for that reason because i was like oh, and now two podcasters talking about photography nice prompt <laughs> didn't really yield good results but here are <laughs> here are a few examples on your screen um of what this thing can do and uh this is a painting of stockholm sometime in the i don't even know 1700s or a something. couple of hundred years ago yes definitely it yeah. Oh, just, yeah definitely it, not modern this looks like it could be hanging on the wall of a gallery. This is an art style that that and Mid Journey supports different kinds of art styles. It does go photorealistic, same as Dali. It does photorealistic. It does painterly. It does all sorts of things. Mid Journey does photorealistic as well. But these kind of detailed painting types, um, uh, this is just mind blowing. I find this really mind blowing. Takes. Uh, probably some iterations to get the prompts right but that's how these things work you put in a prompt it spits out i think nine images and then you can pick one and refine that and can get to your result over like a couple of iterations here's another that one seems to be a bit of a theme the the ability to to because the um the, the one because you, you have to because you have to you know that's the thing it, you, most of those systems don't spit out a perfect image at like like with one prompt and one one try you need to iterate and you need to have your own um your artist eye to pick a good one and mm. so it's it's not it's not necessarily gonna eliminate us humans just like that it will it take totally different our guidance set, isn't it? you know it's very much more like painting than it is like current yeah. photography it's, i mean look at this you're building, scene you're building from, up this this scene uh, some some i don't know square in the rain with uh, reflections and people and an umbrella and lights reflecting and so on. it's just i think i find it stunning what these things can produce here's one more example it's a little a little forest in a jar in front of lights That's from really interesting some, yeah yeah so yeah it's it's pretty cool what these things can do. And sometimes in, in these online platforms, again, this is from a subreddit, uh, the mid-journey subreddit. Sometimes they don't give you the prompts they used. So it's a bit of guesswork how they get to this yeah. result. Mm. It, the So, I mean, in the reading I've done for, for DALI 2, I mean, it, there's a clear, that there's, there's some almost an instruction set. I know we can't get access to it yet, but they say that you can choose a style and you can say, okay, I want this as photographically mm -hmm. realistic or as yep. pixel art or whatever so you can set and you could there are keywords you can use like foreground and background or you, and you things can, like you can that. add like the painted by van gogh you can add the name of a painter and it will em emulate that painter's style 
important. So yeah, uh, is it, yeah. It's, 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 so I think there's there's a there's not just a a creative mindset to learn here, is there? There's actually a syntax. You know, it's like learning. It's a programming language almost, isn't it? It might be fairly. It might be almost a natural language programming, but it is a programming language of sorts. It's very interesting to see where this will where this will go. Here's a, here's another platform that no one has access to, at least no one in a well internally probably, and that's by Google. It's called uh, Google I Imagine Imagine e I M A G E N. I so, think it's imagine. Yeah, I think it's, it's it's clearly it's an amalgam of the word image and generation, isn't it? But, oh, and and imagination, of course. So, <laughs> oh yeah, it's point, yeah. it's it's uh, it's Google internal right now. Um, they they all at least Dali and and uh, and Google Imagen, Imagine they have a very cautious approach at this point. Do you remember? Must be a few years ago, where some AI chatbot was put on Twitter by some company. Was it Google? That then turned pretty quickly turned into uh, into hate spewing Nazi stuff. Well, that is the risk, isn't it? Yeah. You know, How long ago was that? That that was. Do you remember that? That was at least four. So or five if somebody years were, ago. if people, were, I mean, Twitter switched off their app support years ago, didn't they? I mean, yeah, you know, there was. Uh, so these these companies so, yeah. are are very very cautious um, with their approach. That's the reason Dali two is is well. First of all, running in a, in a restricted beta, and second, it, it they have very strict rules of what you are allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. So there's the the whole violence aspect is uh, is not not or at least to a certain extent from a certain extent is not allowed. Uh, no porn. No sex stuff. Um, you can't even. You're not even allowed to create photorealistic pictures of people's faces, and one reason being that they, they don't turn out well because <laughs> it is weird what comes out sometimes. And second, of course, they are afraid of uh, some someone trying to I don't know impersonate someone famous. The faces and... thing is interesting, isn't it? I mean, yes, there's there's all that, and there's a wider topic of AI ethics, which is um, which is is gaining some traction in a, in a lot of places, and especially you know in the world of software development. the 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 faces thing is interesting. Does that speak? Do you think? Yeah, you know, these AIs are very to to be successful. They have to be very narrow. Is is, is the term they, they use? They have to be very focused on a certain objective. Um, uh, and if the objectives are too broad, can, then but the, but can these systems be narrow? You know, they they have well, such a variety of output. So, but there um, are AI systems that can generate faces very very realistically now, aren't there? So I'm wondering whether true. this is a feat. Yeah, in part, this is a yes. There are good reasons for it not to generate you know real fa real looking faces, but perhaps it's actually that that is such a complex area of research in its own right that they don't that the, the capability simply isn't there to do both types of thing at this point right. i don't know i'm speculating obviously, so so I, I guess hard, right <laughs> and and i guess i guess what they're doing they they have they i mean they, these are smart people they are probably likely well aware of these implications that's why those rules are in place in the first place and uh, i think that that as soon as this opens, I, I think they do this because they don't want any bad press when the whole thing goes open, as in you can mm -hmm. buy access to their API. Um, and then I think a lot of, I mean, there, there are a lot of people circumventing these rules by, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of filtering built in. So sometimes you get a prompt telling you, ah, you're not allowed to do that. That's against the rules. Um, but then people get around these prompts by using, well, by writing prompts that are that sound very inconspicuous, but create something that is not okay. Like for example, I've seen a picture um, where someone used the prompt a uh, horse sleeping on a beach of a red lake. And you end up with a horse lying in a big puddle of blood, you know oh, that kind of okay. stuff. So, so it is. It is. If if you're creative enough, you can 
circumvent these things. Cause, yes. Because um, prompt building, again, is a skill. And of course, people are very skillful with language. So they will play with these things. Anyway, mm. so Dali is is cautious. Bit journey, I've, I've not looked into the rules. And uh, again, I've only played with it for like 20, 30 image creations. And then my my beta beta credits were uh, all used up and i uh i didn't have the time to 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 continue doing they, that they kicked you out of the rabbit hole after no <laughs> after i'm still there i'm still there this whole the whole the whole mid journey thing is on a discord so you have a discord and you have a channel yeah. where you can type in a prompt and then it generates something and spits it out and uh so you can also which is nice because you can in parallel see all the others generating and refining their images you have a mm, constant stream yeah, of of uh, of of p pictures being generated and you can read their prompts and learn from them so that's a good approach i think um again imagine by google's not out there yet um but the the examples that they show on their uh website is uh, they are they are very very interesting like here of an oil painting of a fuzzy panda wearing a cowboy hat hat and a black leather jacket riding a bike. I'm just clicking on different words here. Or let's have him skateboard. Or let's have him be in a garden. Skateboard in a garden. No, let's have him skateboard on a beach or on top of a mountain. These are pre-made examples, but they give you an idea. Let's do yeah. a, let's do the same thing as a photo, right? Let's let's do the photo with him skating on the beach. You know, this gives you a bit of an idea. Um there have it been tests. Really interesting, yeah. There have been surveys out there that try to compare the Im Imagine images with the DALI two images, um, or the preference that people would cho choose if they had the same prompt and the results. And okay. Google's Google's Imagen is uh, is the outright winner there, because there are public examples of Google Imagen, and then people have taken that same prompts and put them into DALI 2 because that is in a semi-open beta. So you can right. just generate the same thing. And turns out that these systems do have their strengths in some areas, but not in all areas. So it's part of the learning process. Absolutely. And the, the, yeah, the amount of data you need to train these things is astonishing, isn't it? So oh, and, Google, it, and it's one also thing Google has got is plenty of data. <laughs> And it's also a bit controversial. I mean, what one of the things that uh, you are very likely aware of is the biases in in uh, oh, yes. AI very data much. sets. So what we're looking at is if, if you ask one of these systems to create a picture of a wedding, it is almost certainly going to be a Western white wedding um, with all the things that you would expect as a Westerner. Um, that's because of the biases in the data set. So uh, some of those systems, when you ask them, or most of them actually, is if you ask them to create pictures of a pilot, they will most likely be male pilots. If you ask them for pictures of nurses, they will most likely be female nurses. Yeah, and, it's, uh, it, that is a, is a tricky thing in its own right, isn't it's it? Very, point. very tricky. Um, so the, these systems are not without problems. They have their issues. And of course, they have their implications. We're looking at... The, the example I keep digging out for, have 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 kicked out have dug out for some of the podcasts I've recorded in the last week is the example of the Chicago Sun Times, which is the a, a big newspaper in Chicago, and in 2013, um, their management decided to fire all the photographers, all the staff photographers. I remember the stories. Remember uh, there was yes. a lot of that at the time, but I remember that one. Yeah. And the, the reason was to save money. And uh, they, instead of having professional photographers who are really good at the visual thing, they gave all their writers uh, iPhones, gave them a, a couple of hours of training, and off they went. And the image quality obviously went down. But it was good enough, and it's still good enough. This is not doesn't win any Pulitzer Prizes, but it is still good enough to show what is being talked about so in the sense that anybody actually buys newspapers but yeah <laughs> well that's a totally different story and we are um we're nine years uh, this is nine years in the past so mm. things have changed since but then there are implications of course if you need stock footage or stock pictures of something then you won't need anyone to you won't need to buy that stock footage you have to generate it um graphics departments there's a chance that some of them will just 
be obsolete in a few years because of these systems. So there is there are a whole lot of implications um, in terms of jobs, in terms of how the whole art scene will change because the moment you, if you're a graphic designer and you have one of these systems, what does what, what happens to your skills? Because you won't need them anymore, at least to a certain extent. So does that mean your your skill set will shrivel and because it's not being used anymore? Will someone maybe, else? Maybe who's, all the graphic designers will have to retrain to work in 3D and start designing the metaverse. The well, <laughs> question is, is that going to happen? Because uh, there, there might be someone who's much better with language who comes in and just sweeps the floor with these graphic designers who only know how to put lines on paper, you know? I, that's I all know. speculation at this point, it, but it. I am not too, I'm not too sure that that's not going to happen. So anyway, let's have some fun. Anyway, under some fun links. <laughs> let's have some fun. So um, there is a system out there called Dali Mini. And Dali Mini is not affiliated with Dali 2. It's not affiliated with OpenAI. It's a separate project. Um, and the name implies that it's smaller, which means the whole data set behind it is much, much smaller. Um, so it's not as good. It's not as versatile and uh but it's open to everyone and it's open to anything you want to create with it so go ahead make your porn or whatever you want the problem is well it's not a problem it's a feature of it that um the results are very very easily identifiable as having been generated oh yes, yes right so yeah. so the, the there's no uproar there's no I don't know. There's no big outcry that uh, someone is faking. I don't know having Boris Johnson sit in a in a vat of baked beans or something. That that, that is <laughs> that, that this stuff exists out there. There's probably um, no, a real photograph of that somewhere. If you do. <laughs> probably no, but but what happened is that this thing has com completely gone viral because yeah everyone can create anything and the uh, the results are interesting i've 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 used the system and of course we're going to put the link in the description here uh i've taken dali mini and i've plugged in the prompt three podcasters discussing dali mini <laughs> and it spits out nine images and then you can look at the details and you can you can tell it's more of the idea of what you talked about than a picture that you would really recognize much on but hey there's microphones there's computer there's people there's um there's a podcast like scenarios there's i don't know yeah, something looks it's... really weird sometimes the people's faces they look like they were in really bad accidents sometimes <laughs> um but hey this the, the what you get is captures the gist of the thing you put in there most of the time so yeah, even and if you think about just how complex it is to even generate something like this, which is clearly, you know, uh, uh, um, you couldn't use any of these images for those that can't see them. You couldn't use any of these images if, uh, for any intent or purpose, really. They're not they're not they're simply not good enough, are they? Um, but the just the amount of computing and, and learning that needs to happen uh, to create these kind of images at all is quite yeah. incredible. So. And and because of of course because the system has become uh, has gone vi viral, it, it can be cumbersome to get a result out of it because most of the time now when you put a prompt in and click it goes yeah sorry no computational time left on yeah. the system because it runs Quite on busy. some public resource and so on, but it's worth to keep trying. Sometimes you have to click ten times and then you, and then you have to wait because it takes a minute or two or three uh, to give you a result, but. It's, it's a fun thing to play with. And a lot of people have found the same. And uh, I have um, found a subreddit called Weird Dali, <laughs> which is uh, seems to have become a bit of a basin of, uh, of a collection basin for these Dali mini outputs. So um, I've picked a few of those that, I want to go through and they range from the weird to the dark to the to the wrong pretty much so let's let's look at a few of those um here's one i find really nice jesus installing insulation in his attic i love this one 
I saw and this. And I was like, yeah, this is great. And it's, of course, the Western Jesus with his tunic on and uh, the hair and the beard, the way that you would expect in, in pop culture. Uh, Absolutely. Walk, walk, in, walk into any church, walk into any Christian church in, in yes. Western Europe and you will see Jesus depicted this way. So then there's, there's obviously nine pictures of Jesus in an attic installing insulation. Um, this one I found very funny. A Fisher Prize, my first bong. <laughs> And and of course, that should be in the just wrong category. <laughs> no, I, I found this very funny because you get the you get the typical like paraphernalia pictures, but they are all plastic, like oh, typical plastic. Fisher Price colors, right? The green, the yellow, yeah. the red, the blue. Very yeah. strong primary colors and things. Um, very SpongeBob type colors. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Which That's this is one of the one of the meme potential here to to mash up. Things that don't belong to each yeah, other. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, is this funny? Here's uh, Steve Irwin finds a fax machine. <laughs> Why not? I mean, it's this is what it would look like, and I can I can literally hear his voice. Yeah. Oh, it's a beauty. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes, I haven't seen a fax machine in years, actually. But there you go. Well, here's one. Here's uh, one now. Yeah, Willem Dafoe pest dispenser. <laughs> Why not? That's just that. That's inspired. That is, I love what that's generated. That's great. and he's clearly recognizable, right? Not oh, really yeah. in detail, but hey, it's Willem Dafoe. And well, you don't need he, a lot of detail on Willem Dafoe's face to recognize him. He has a very <laughs> distinct, yeah, look, doesn't he? So it's uh, it kind of works nice. Uh, that's very true. Here's a portable toilet on the lunar surface, right? Always handy. <laughs> yeah, but you might need one up there. I mean, it might be a bit dangerous to actually use it, but. Um, oh well. Um, here's one that goes in the darker category, I think. IKEA Chernobyl. Yeah, that's an odd one. This is, a, but it's a, such an interesting mashup because this shows us the it mashes up the pictures of the Chernobyl ruin, the Chernobyl um, power plant, or what's left of it, with IKEA colors and logos on it, sort of logos. Yes. Sort of yeah. logos, but yeah, it's definitely recognizable as an IKEA because of the. the Here's one. I'm not sure you have to be the judge if that's in the wrong category or or not. This is Gordon Ramsay sinking in quicksand. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, no, that's that, that, that's just a bit of fun, isn't it? You can you can imagine his voice, can't you? You know, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Um, this one, the JFK assassination Lego set. That's yeah. That's that is clearly very, wrong, right? Yes, but it's very, very, very weird. But it's uh, but you, you can almost maybe not something that's such such a uh, a wrong topic or a wrong scene to do. But there are there's lots and lots of Lego coming out now, and you can just you can imagine somebody doing something just a little bit more positive, and then it actually becoming real. Yeah, so, that's, that one, yeah. yeah. Is, um, here's here's another one that I put in the dark category, and that is uh, Mac Funeral. Yeah. So it's it's a bunch of pictures of caskets with McDonald's logos on them. They look like some of them look like the like the the Big Mac boxes that you get. Yes, yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Yes. Yes, but it's, yeah, it's, it's amazing what goes through people's. I think that the 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 real point for me on this is is just understanding what goes through people's heads. Is very strange. somebody had to had to come up with that prompt. Here, here's okay. This is in the. We'll now get into the really dark. So if you are squeamish, don't uh, don't keep looking. But uh, here's the a concentration camp for furries. Hmm. Yeah, That's some deep. Social criticism somebody, in here. So, somebody's so, somebody's really upset by by that as a concept, aren't they? Somebody, you know, somebody really doesn't like the whole furry movement. <laughs> well, here's Bob Ross painting with blood. That does not go together. But hey, this is what I would imagine him looking like with the uh, blood on his yeah. brushes. And Str just, just strange. Um, Ricky Gervais putting a baby in a microwave. I mean, those pictures are f are are friendly enough, but the context is completely wrong. Or the um, Finding Nemo sushi. No, I oh. love this one. This one is definitely not in the wrong category. This one should just go straight to the top of the fun category. <laughs> I think 
I mean, well, show yeah. this, show this to your kids, and they will be scarred for life. Come on. No, they won't. They oh, they will. They will. No. Anyway, at least I've, I've the, won- the thing is, I think the thing for me is that that makes this different is that Nemo is a fictional cartoon character, so ah, it neither looks human go. realistic nor is it nor is it about a real person. Some of those other ones that are about real. But the people, sushi right? is real. <laughs> here's here's my favorite. Uh, this is this is the bonus one. Mark Zuckerberg as a ventriloquist dummy. Yeah, no, that he, works. That works for me. That works yeah. really well because he he. Uh, I mean, he has something about him that almost gets into this category sometimes. Uh, he he. A lot of his photos come across as very wooden, don't they? So uh, yeah. Um, so this is a good fit, I think. It, I think it is. Although I have to say, I'm not buying a ticket for that show. It sounds deathly boring. <laughs> I mean, uh, doesn't doesn't the ventriloquism always depend on the person sticking their hand up into the well, dummy? There's a there's, a, uh, there's a, a moral, ethical, and philosophical question there then as well, isn't there? Who is pulling Zuckerberg string? <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm, but but these this, this discussion. As as bizarre as it is, we wouldn't have had without someone thinking of it and not just thinking of it, but making it into a picture. So that's true, and we wouldn't have been able to have this discussion at the time when we started this podcast in late 2017. We the, we couldn't have had this discussion at that. No, because no one would have didn't exist. Expected this. Um, I'm not sure. Dali, the first Dali, which is almost like Dali Mini in terms of the the, the results. Um, I don't know when that came out, but that must be around that time, I believe. So, But then the results were far from what these systems can do now. And uh, anyway... Um, it doesn't, I, it doesn't bode well for people for people who have been professional photographers and then have had to migrate it over time to stock photography and watch the prices crash of stock photography, just yeah. to know that in a few years that's just going to completely go away. Um, it's like uh, like with a with a steam machine and the printer, printing press, and so on. That's uh, uh, yes, and probably, the fax machine, <laughs> and the fax machine, right? So anyway, let's uh, wrap this up. We um, have put. All the links that we talked about are in the show notes. Adrian, good luck putting all that together. Oh, I've got my pick of the week. Hang on. Oh, you have a pick pick of the week? week. Okay, let me stop this. You have a... Okay, I forgot the picks of the week. I, um, of course, did not enter one, but that doesn't matter because I had like... No, because I have a really good one. I have 15 picks of the week in this episode. So That's true. That's true. So my my one is... My my one is a book this week. It's a book that I'm currently reading, um, and uh, it's fascinating. It's also very linked to this topic today because it's about AI, uh, and it's called AI 2041, 10 Visions for Our Future. Oh, it is it's really interesting. It's it's it was published last year, so it's very current. So it, it is a book that will probably age quickly because the AI world is moving on so quickly. But this is a collaboration between an AI scientist uh, and academic and uh, and businessman uh, with a sci-fi writer. Mm-hmm. And what they do, um, they, they, it, it's constructed, it's really interesting, it's constructed to give people who perhaps don't have access or, or whose brains just close down when they try and read academic papers, a view of some of the current major themes in AI of the of the pros and cons of those and the current state of of the global debate about AI, and the way they do that is they've written ten short fictional stories. Uh, you can call them science fiction. They're not science fiction in the sense that they are space. Mm-hmm. They're science fiction in the sense that they deal with science and its impact and uh, on and human society. Uh, and uh, what the, the it's it, each um, uh, each short story is followed by an analysis. Uh, analysis report which draws out and helps point the reader to the various different AI themes that are being questioned and, and being explored mm-hmm. in that particular short story. It gives the, the authors a chance to uh, explain the, the pros and cons of each uh, and, and it's um, it's fascinating. Um, I'm, a, I've only, I'm only in story number two of ten at the moment and I'm just like wow I have to share this with everybody. Uh, that sounds people- amazing. It is, it is amazing. You should read it. You would love it. The people who write it 
um, are such good people. I can't even just do them justice in in one sentence, but I've, I've actually pasted their bios into the show notes. So the, the sci-fi author is a chap called Chen Kifan, who I read one of his um, his novels recently, a novel called uh, Waste Tide, which was was excellent. Um, and uh, he's he's brought the the sci-fi element to this, but he has a um, he was not always uh, a sci-fi author. He has a background in technology as well. Um, and then the uh, the technical p- uh, partner in in this partnership is a chap called Dr. Kai Fu Li, who has a biography that I could I it would take the rest of the double length <laughs> podcast to read it out. Just just dipping into his biography though. Um, he was president of Google China. Um, he did found, I think somewhere it says in here, he founded the Microsoft Research China Lab. Um, so he's um, he's also worked for Apple, by the way. Um, but for the last 10 plus years, he's been a, a venture capitalist in the AI space in China. He's also very popular, very sorry, well known for writing a book a couple of years ago called AI Superpowers. Um, so yeah, these are two very, very accomplished, very, very knowledgeable people. And what they've put together is a really interesting insight. Um, uh, whether I'd call it a primer of AI, to AI, possibly not, because it's, it's, it's more of an introduction to the themes rather than the technical side of it. So, so if anybody's is looking it, for that. Is it, is it, is it predictions or is it more like science fiction stories? And then they take it apart and look what is realistic, what isn't, what is already there. So that's a really good question. So what they've said and the way they've pitched it is it's it's called AI 2041 because it's deliberately set 20 years from when right. it was written. And that's they an awful constru- long time with the speed of the current developments. It, it is. It is that's yeah. a, I noted that. It's really interesting because the, the constraint that they've given themselves is that they are only speculating based upon technology that either exists today or is just is, is emerging today. Mm-hmm. So it's extrapolation from the position today. It's not completely new imagination this is not your right. typical space opera where there's faster than light drives and stuff like that this is extrapolating from known technology today to the societal impact the very first story uh, was about uh, a family who uh, the, the 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 ai had gamified the insurance industry and it's mm. about a family who who through various different apps on their phones that are all owned in the background by their insurance company their premium insurance premiums go up and down every day based upon their behavior online the people they hang out with the places they go that's yeah. an extrapolation of what tesla is doing right now in in america with some of their insurance products it, it's yeah. not too. I mean, insurance is is known to be one of the the, the near term big markets for AI oh, yes. for precisely these reasons. Um, so uh, yeah, so they've started. Yeah, it's really it's fascinating stuff. Anyway, you would you personally, Chris, I'm sure would really enjoy this book. I think I would. So it's on my list already. Um, <laughs> Okie dokie. So now we are going to wrap up this episode. Um, again, if you haven't watched this, if you only listened to this, you probably missed a few of the really juicy pictures. Um, but um, yeah, the links are in the in the show notes, so feel free to click through and look at some of those, or go explore uh, explore on your own. Um, yeah, we are beware, beware the time sink in it though; it could go on for a long time. This, I mean, yeah, especially if when you start generating with uh, Dali Mini and. Uh, work out the prompts and get the details i did that i did a little skateboarding panda while we were talking actually it's nowhere near (laughs) as good as the one that came out of the google system anyway we'll be back soon with more until then everyone take care make pictures and see you then bye bye you've been listening to the future of photography Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Hold up. 